Hi YouTube, um, I was just going to do a quick video about my um, giant leaf insects, um, Phylium giganteum is the scientific name. Um, these guys, they're from Malaysia, I'll just show you down here. Um, this is how I keep them, just in an um, exoterra cage. Um, I might have to use a torch here just to show you them a bit better. Um, but yeah, this is a, an exoterra cage which is uh, 60 high by uh, 45 by 45 um, so it's fairly tall uh, and how I keep them is just with um, a bottle of uh, water and brambles so dead easy to feed um, and then in the bottom here I just have uh, eco earth which is just like coconut fibre um, and I just try and keep that damp so I just spray that um, once in the morning once in the evening uh, and I spray the sides of the cage quite regularly and the leaves as well. Um, but what I wanted to show you tonight is most of these guys, I've got five, so there's one here, there's another one here. That, um, most of them are just literally about to shed their skin. There's another one uh, at the back there. That, um, they're just about to do yeah, their final molt. Um, here's another one that's about to shed as well. Um, what's quite interesting though is that can you see this one's got a big chunk out of the side of him? There's a big sort of hole. Let's see if I can do this with my camera. Yeah, so just just here, this notch out of the side. It's not supposed to be like that. And quite often the um, they actually eat each other. <laughs> they nibble each other. Um, so no matter how fresh the leaves are that you put in there, sometimes they'll just. Um, go up to each other and decide that they want to take a chunk out of each other instead. So this one as well, just trying to do this with one hand, but this one you can see here, that's another um, hole that's been eaten out of the side of them. It doesn't seem to affect them, as long as like, the middle um, isn't eaten, and they're really really thin at the sides, so actually if a little bit of the side is nibbled it just heals, uh, and then they carry on. Um, but what's really interesting is one of them had this where it had quite a few chunks in it and it's just shed its skin. So I was just going to show you this one, talk about it for a second. So this one here um, that's just about to shed, you can see it's not got full wings yet. It's just got these little wing buds. Uh, let me see if I can put my torch down again. I can. I can point to them. So yeah, in here there are just these little wing buds here and inside that when, when they do their final molt they get full wings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out one that just shed last night and I've left it today to harden, just this one here. So I've just put the torch down when I get her out. Okay, so I was always told that this these are quite a delicate species. So when I started keeping them, I was really worried that I, you know, wouldn't do particularly well with them. Um, but I've had all of these five since they were nymphs. And look now, this is uh, as an adult, absolutely stunning. And yeah, can you see the wings? So they start there, and the wing comes all the way down to here. You can see it's like a, it's like a. Um, separate section there that lifts up. She may even, um, as she's walking, she may lift it up a little bit. There you go, look. See the wing there? Um, but I've never seen these guys fly or anything, so I don't know if they, if they particularly use their wings, but it's just amazing to see it like that with its wings. So one thing that's even more amazing about this particular species is they're parthenogenic. Um, quite a few species of um, stick insects and leaf insects are. Not many uh, creatures at all in the animal kingdom do it, but uh, phasmids or stick and leaf insects uh, are the ones that uh, are kind of most known about, I would say. Um, so being parthenogenic just means that they can lay eggs uh, without the eggs being fertile. fertile. So the females um, don't need a male uh, and they've evolved to do that so very 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 rarely a male does turn up so it will be that uh, 
you know you'll get to this stage and you'll you'll get them to molt and one might turn out to be a male but this never happened <laughs> to me especially as this is the first time I'm keeping them but um, in museum collections and things like that occasionally a male will turn up uh, and the males just look really really thin they're completely kind of different shape to the females this is quite good that you can really see her wings there um, this is the most active you're likely to ever see one of these leaf insects by the way they're normally they just hang on their plant all day long being pretty still don't do very much at all sometimes when you blow them typically she's not going to do it now sometimes they just rock backwards and forwards um, and it's just to mimic uh, the action of the wind like as if there were a leaf swaying in the wind and the sort of the swaying thing is the, the most you tend to see them doing um, so yeah so hopefully I'll be able to get all five of mine to molt um, oh yeah another thing I was going to mention this one here has got a front leg missing so you can see just that front leg there there isn't one on this side um, and again maybe it was nibbled by one of the other ones um, or maybe it just got its leg stuck and, and pulled you know maybe it pulled and it fell off or something um, who knows but I'm quite hopeful that when she does her final molt she may regrow that leg um, completely I know like if they're tiny little nymphs and they lose a leg you know sometimes when they do their next molt they have a you know a sort of a half growing leg and then when they do their molt after that they have a full growing leg back you know back as it should be um, with these being so close to adulthood I'm quite intrigued to see whether she'll um, shed out and she'll have a completely uh, new leg or if it'll just be maybe just a half size leg but interestingly you know the one I just showed you which is now again a perfect specimen that had all of the sort of nibble marks out of the side of it um, and now it's back to being perfect so it's just amazing they can go through their molt and uh, sort of reform themselves back to perfection uh, anyway yeah I can thoroughly recommend keeping this species uh, I've kept a lot of stick insects in the past uh, the ones that I have found kind of most hardy are things like um, uh, the Australian prickly stick insect, uh, spiny stick insects, um, which are these are all sort of giant species, and the jungle nymph as well, um, which is like the heaviest insect in the world. Um, that's a, a good one to keep. Um, but the, these ones, yeah, I thought they would be completely delicate compared to the, the big giant uh, stick insects, and they're not at all. They're not delicate, so I can I can definitely recommend it. Um, okay, check out my other videos if you want to see more um, animals. I keep a lot of reptiles and amphibians and uh, invertebrates as well. Um, so check it out, and if I ever get eggs from these guys, uh, I shall let you know. Uh, and then again, if I hatch the eggs, I'll. Uh, I'll show you them at that stage as well. And um, these guys are from Malaysia, by the way, if I didn't mention that already. Cool. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.